This is about Obama's America. I recently read a book which was in part about the person and the presidency of that skinny guy with the funny name Barack Hussein Obama. The author of that book had the utmost amount of respect for Obama. He called him one of the great presidents and he called him a conservative revolutionary, a phrase I'm not sure I understand. But I do know that the author believed that Obama, the election of Obama, was one of the best things to ever happen to America. Transformational. And from that, I turned to another book about the same subject from a radically different perspective, this one titled The Roots of Obama's Rage. There was a picture of Obama on the cover, frowning, shaded red, and I expected the book to be a searing attack on the man. It was not. It was a sober analysis based on the two books Obama had written, Dreams from My Father and The Audacity of Hope, as well as the man's specific words and actions on his way to becoming himself and President of the United States. Talk about dreams. Talk about audacity. The book is about two things especially. The first is Obama's skillful transformation into the kind of black person who could be an acceptable leader to both blacks and whites. The second was about developing his driving ideology, which he got from his father, a Kenyan, a strident anti-colonialist. About the first, shaping his public character, I think that many rock stars were mostly oddballs who were picked on as kids. Obama shares that. He was chubby, not a standout at anything, an Oreo, black and white, had the weird name, and he very deliberately turned that raw material into something that people supported almost fiercely. The author of the book calls it lactification, whitening. Obama went from being an insignificant berry to a man with purpose and a destiny, Barack, a black man, an African American. But he was a non-threatening, affable black man. Whites did not feel guilty around him. He had no contact with civil rights or slavery. He dressed in tailored suits, he spoke superbly, a sonorous voice, and precise elocution. He was calm with a good sense of humor. He was inspirational. Black people loved him, and many whites as well. They adored him. He was like a dream come true. At heart, he was a brilliant, lovable, caring guy with an Ivy League pedigree. That was the conservative part. Here comes the revolutionary. His ideology came straight from his father, the anti-colonialism. In America, it was neo-colonialism. Slavery was gone, but white supremacy remained. That was exactly what the author of the book, Eight Years in Power, had espoused. He was right in line with Obama's agenda. As an anti-colonialist, Obama wants to undercut the rich and weaken the military power of America. He wants to loosen her grip on the world and her role as the global policeman until she has no hand in world affairs at all except, maybe, a helping hand. He agrees with Lenin, who wrote that capitalism has to turn to imperialism or it will collapse. He opposed that tendency toward imperialism. It isn't that Obama hates America. His vision of America, so says the author of the second book, is one of a beast that needs to be curbed, led by a small group of very rich people, white people, who need to be separated from their money and their power. He observed firsthand the nature and effects of colonial rule in Hawaii. So we have the Obama who will heal and unify, and the Obama who will redistribute the wealth and power. Those who oppose him think he is either crazy or out to destroy the country. Those who support him, the author calls them the choir because they are so fervent in singing his praises, worship him, 
One wrote that he is that rare kind of attuned being who can actually help usher in a new way of being on the planet. These kinds of people help us to evolve. That's the love song of the choir. The author of the book does not favor Obama's policies. He opposes nearly all of them, strenuously. But I think, having a remarkably similar personal history, he understood the man and admired him and what he had accomplished. His chief regret, I think, would be Obama's wholehearted adoption of his father's ideology, even with his father's many failings. Obama would attribute those failings, I think, to the oppression of the colonial rule, giving him an even more personal stake and therefore a greater urgency in the direction of his life.